BizQuick podcast hits on the struggles and advantages of being an entrepreneur. It's for anyone who's made the commitment to burn the boats and not look back. Are you a busy entrepreneur or small business owner trying to do it all? Then this podcast is for you. Corey and Julie will take you through the details of building a strong business. Hit the subscribe button and gear up for another episode of Biz Quick Podcast. Hello and welcome to Biz Quick. I'm Corey. I'm Julie. And if there's something wrong with the sound right now, we don't know what it is. We don't. But welcome to BizQuick. Yeah, welcome. We're glad yeah. you're here. Yeah. We have uh, Pete Moore on the show today. He is the host of Simplifying Entrepreneurship, a podcast. He's a former radio host, and he is basically a direct competitor with us. So mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to talk to him. Mm-hmm. Do you think we can talk to him without letting him pitch his business at all? Mm. If he's as good as us, then no. Well, competition is good, though. It is. Because if you try to eliminate your competition, you're really just eliminating yourself. Did Shaq say that? Shaquille O'Neal? Yes. Yeah, in the movie Space Jam. There you go. I don't I don't think <laughs> so. I read it in a book, <laughs> and it feels like it's true. I trust the source. Yes. Yeah. A book, done. I read a lot. I don't know if you know that about me. I do. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah. So let's talk about... Uh, Simplifying stuff, making things easier. Well, yeah, let's talk about it. I had, interestingly enough, I had a long conversation about simplifying last night because, as you know, but maybe our listeners don't, I am in a year long coaching program with Tony Watley. And yes, even coaches need coaching. It's like therapists need to go to therapy. Yeah. So we talked a lot about um, how sometimes, in order to get further ahead faster you need to the answer is simplifying Mm -hmm. right versus you know we've done a lot of hey let's open this let's try this let's do this right throwing more things at it which i think is common for new entrepreneurs or you know new businesses let's try this let's try that because you really just you're pulling every lever you can and then at some point you got to take a step back and say we need to streamline and simplify we've got too much going on there's too many things what we're doing is probably, if it's confusing to us, it's definitely confusing to our either potential customers or our existing ones. And so just simplifying, I think, is a really good way to kind of niche down on what you're doing and get better at at serving your clients. So how would you, um, where do we start when it comes to uh, prioritizing how to simplify? Like what, what, where do I trim the fat? Well, I think, okay, so let's just use us as an example that um, you can look at it from two perspectives. And I'll tell you what Tony's recommendation is for, you know, entrepreneurs and small business owners. But the first thing is you can look at it from what's the thing that's making us the most money right and then you're that's your main focus right now depending on where you are from a revenue perspective if it's if you're going to focus on the thing that's making you the most you know if you're trying to either just get a little bit ahead or you know get some separation between you know being month to month and making sure you've got enough money to make payroll versus you know, having a comfortable, you know, having a, a comfortable, having, having more operating cash is probably the best way to say it. Then a really good thing to look at is what makes us the most money, right? What has the highest margin? Are we doing the most for people? The other way you can look at it is what is the thing that we are the best at and or enjoy doing the most, Right. Because what makes us the most money may not be the thing we like doing the most. And so you got to figure out Agreed. which is more important and which which makes more sense, right? So um, that's that's where I would start looking at it, right? And then I also, and I, so there's services and, and products or offerings and simplifying that. But then there's also simplifying the, you know, back end work in terms of like, do we really need to be on 
and this is global we, this is not you and me specifically, I mean, do you really need to be on 57 different social media channels? No. Do you really, you know, it's like all the things. So looking at that, so it's sort of a external simplification of what you're offering and an internal simplica- simplification of what you're doing. Okay, so I've got uh, my robot answer for this question, sure but I want to hear it from you. Um, when it comes to factoring in things like getting more sleep, that's important. That will make you more productive. That will pay for itself. And mm-hmm. instead of staying up until 2 or 3 in the morning working on X, Y, or Z, mm-hmm. I'm going to go to bed early and I'm going to start off tomorrow like on, on a good foot. Mm-hmm. Um How do you measure that? How do you determine what's more important, like when it comes to things that are a little more subjective? Are you talking specifically like sleep? Anything. Um, So the number one thing is I don't really negotiate on my sleep, right? Like I'm seven hours. I'm kind of an asshole if I don't get seven hours. I could go on six. Your face tells me that that is a correct statement. (laughs) Um. (laughs) I, so I don't, I don't, I don't compromise my sleep because sleep to me is the number one factor when it comes to your health, your overall health is the amount of sleep you're getting. People who like take pride in sleeping two or three hours a night, they don't realize how big of jerks they are and how unhealthy they are. Well, and I mean, there are certain people out there who can exist off of three yeah, hours of well, sleep. They're, they're a rarity. They're yeah. not near as common as, as entrepreneurs exactly. would like to make yes, you think. Yes, I agree. Um, but for me, it is, um, I think initially, and I know we have very different views on this, initially right now, what's more important to me is getting our business in a steady state where we are able to hire people, more people on the team to do more, take more of the work off of us. And so I'm still in that I'm willing to sacrifice a lot of like my personal life and things like that for the greater good of the business. Um, you are now you've got a lot more on your plate in terms of you, you know, you're opening the restaurant. Um, but I think your ba- balance is that you need to have, you have an easier time shutting things off, just taking the personal time. Whereas I'm like, Oh, I got to do that. I got to do that. So I'm not great at it, but I'm also willing to admit that for right now, running the business is a higher priority for me than having a personal life. Sure. Yeah. Did that answer your question? I don't think so, but... I forgot the question. That was a good story. (laughs) I talked so long, I forgot the question. Yeah. I think that we're going to have to uh, shut this one down. We are going to have to shut this one down. And and bring Pete on. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. All right. We've launched a whole new coaching program aimed at helping small business owners accelerate their revenue. This one-on-one, well, technically two, coaching is built around your schedule and your goals and will help keep you on track to make your business a success. There are no strings attached, no long commitments, and at $600 a month, it's priced perfectly for any small business owner. If you're struggling to find time to grow yourself and your business, or you want to find ways to improve your financial situation, head on over to sbpace.com slash small dash business dash coaching to sign up. And welcome back to the show. We've got Pete Moore on. What is happening, Pete? Oh, having a great day. It's it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Excellent. We are excited to have you on the show, and we're going to jump right into it. So Julie and I were talking earlier about understanding what your time is worth and how important certain things are that we neglect, like sleep or family time, relax, Mm -hmm. you know, relaxing, that type of stuff. How do you put a value on that? Because getting enough sleep makes you more productive, but like people don't don't put enough value in that, in my opinion. Yeah. So one of the things that I do with most people that I coach with is we set up sort of frameworks around uh, using your time properly and uh, splitting it up into three different areas, which I call free time, flex time and focus time. And from that perspective, uh, some people will use that and say, I'm going to take a free day or I'm going to take a focus day and, you know, plug it in on their calendar, that kind of stuff. Or some people will just use it in blocks of time. Like I'm going to take the afternoon off. So it's a free afternoon or focus afternoon or flex. And from the flex perspective, you're always trying to um, make your free time better or to make your focus time better. And that's how you use your flex time. But, you know, time is a really interesting thing and it's always now, Uh, you know, it's, we can't look back uh, at how we used our time and we can't really look ahead other than 
planning on how we're going to use our time, but the now is the present. And when we look at that sort of stuff, there's only 24 hours in a day. And Dean Jackson said, this is where I first heard it, but there's only 24 hours in a day. You can't use more and you and you, um, sorry, you can't buy more and you can't use less. So how are you going to use that time? And when we look at sort of this idea of your free time, which is what you kind of kicked it off with there, such an important piece to use that. And I, I, I frame it out in my journals. I have a journal system that, that I use and, uh, I frame that out and how I'm going to be most active in my free time, who I'm going to see, what I'm going to do, all those sort of things. Uh, and sometimes of course I leave myself just blank blanket open space, but it's if you're a creative kind of person, that free time is so important. And the more you work and the harder you work, the less it, the less creative you are. So if if creativity is a part of your job, then you really need to get your sleep. You need to have your creative time. You need to have your free time. So, uh, yeah, it's important stuff for sure. And not all time is created equal. So, no. like, like for me, I'm, I'm a, a I'm a procrastinator. I can yeah. get a shit ton of work done in a small amount of time when mm-hmm. I need to. Um, yep. but I, I also don't need that much time off, like taking an hour off or an evening off is fine for the week. And then, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of the week I'm going to, you know, work until two in the morning, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that, that we all need to realize that, you know, what's important to us and, and like how you recharge, relax and, and all that type of stuff. Yeah, man. I wasn't going anywhere with that. Any questions? I, well, no, I was just going to comment on when you said that you can get a shit ton of things done in a very small amount of time. You're a procrastinator. You can only get a shit ton of amount of stuff done in a very small period of time if you actually have a list of what you have to do. That's that's true. Yes. Corey, that's that idea. Corey is forgetful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the idea, Julie, of using your flex time in order to set that stuff up. Right. And you need to actually build in time within your schedule, within your calendar to give yourself that time to write and scribe and to work around that stuff so that you're when you are in your focus time. And I mean, I, I could talk for two hours on on how to use your time. That's a different episode. But uh, from from this perspective, you know, how to use your time is a really interesting thing. And I'm you know, using them in modules, whether that module is a five minute block, a 20 minute block, an hour block, a half day or a day um, is really important on how you structure so that you can be most effective every day. Where do you find that entrepreneurs struggle the most with the concept of the flexible, free and focused time blocks or time time usage? It's always free time. It's always free time. And that they don't Everybody, use enough of it. <laughs> yeah. They get sucked into working and they get sucked into, you know, doing other things around uh, their lives that they think is more important than actually taking time for themselves. Um, and, and, you know, from that perspective, here are some of the things that if you're not taking that sort of time that can affect, um, it can affect your health. It can affect your wealth. It can affect your relationships. It can affect your mission and your purpose in life and for your business. If you don't actually take the time that you need to in order to rejuvenate the batteries and give yourself sort of that um, replenishment time uh, in, in mind, just mind, you know, give yourself your mind a break basically every now and then. It's just a really important thing. Interesting. So we one of the things that we literally talked about on the front end yeah. Um, was when we were talking about, um, you know, that question that Corey had asked in terms of, you know, how do you prioritize um, between, you know, work and personal and ba- sort of balance things out. I don't believe in balance. I don't believe in work-life balance. I don't think that exists. Yeah. I think it's... There are seasons, right? Right. Um, yeah. So I will not compromise on my sleep, um, mm-hmm. mostly because of how I treat other people when I do. Um, I'm just not a very nice person. Um, And I also don't really think very clearly if I don't have enough sleep. So I'm very consistent when I go to bed, when I wake up, like it's consistent, right? And I have a, I really take sleep very, very seriously. I think it's the most important part of our health as human beings Mm -hmm. is sleep. Um, But I also, on the flip side of that sleep, I... It was telling Corey and our listeners that I am right now in the mindset of we are in growth mode of our business. And yeah. so for me, I am willing to spend less time with friends and family, really mm-hmm. less time with family, if you catch my drift there. <laughs> but I am not willing to sacrifice growing the business, right? So I put way more emphasis on work right now, knowing that there are other things that are falling by the wayside. Now, I still... 
you know, work out every day and, and take, yeah. take my care of my health, but my relationships, if you are not in my inner, inner circle, you're probably not hearing a lot from me right now. And I'm okay with that. And if I lose some people along the way, I'm also okay with that. There'll be time for that. And I mean, like, like we said, there are seasons and those seasons, sometimes we're busy and we have a busy season with our health. Uh, we have a busy season with our relationships. We have a busy season with our mission, with our business. We have a busy season, you know, on those, all those different areas and understanding when you were talking about, there's no real balance, but understanding what season you're in and how to manage the rest of those buckets, what I call buckets. Um, you know, the one page planner that I've created really has all those buckets on it so that understanding what you want out of each of those buckets is the biggest starting point so that when you're when you are in a season you can still be looking back at those other things and and being conscious of them i think along the way so um you know all of that sort of stuff uh crucial to being a leader in business and when you talk about your health i mean i've i've i have an aura ring on my hand uh o-u-r-a is the name of that and it's called the sleep ring i'm very conscious of my sleep i'm very conscious of my deep sleep my REM sleep all of those kind of things um you know i I'm conscious about when I go to bed, when I wake up, how long did I sleep? You know, a lot of that sort of stuff, really, really important to leading a proper team because, you know, there's a great old adage out there that I heard from Joe Polish. And he says, the person that has their health has a thousand dreams and the person that does not has but one. And I think that's really important because if you can't keep your health up, you can't run a good business. So yeah, sleep is a big part of that. I just want to know how much you got paid for that aura. Uh, oh yeah, no, I, I didn't get paid. I'm just, I'm, I'm a, I, I've been wearing it for three years. I love the thing. So I'm, I, I'm happy to, uh, to share because I think it's a great tool. I'm curious if you have read it cause you're, you're a big reader. Um, yeah. have you read boundless by Ben Greenfield? I have not. That's Cannot one I recommend it yet. enough. It is in well, first off, it's, it's basically biohacking. The whole book is about biohacking, but his chapter on sleep yeah. literally changed my life. Like it, it cool. introduced me to so many concepts around sleep that I had absolutely no idea about. And I was like, Oh, okay. So when someone like brags on not sleeping, I'm like, you're, you're an idiot. You sound dumb. Right. Like <laughs> I think people don't realize that sleep is when your brain actually basically runs a cleanse on your database and like gets you ready for the next. So you need sleep to do that. But the other thing is that people who are like on this, you know, sort of the hamster wheel of constantly trying to lose weight. Yeah. We lose the majority of our weight while we're sleeping and people don't know that it's crazy. So it's like, if you are, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to sacrifice sleep so I can get in a second workout or something. I'm like, you're actually focusing on the wrong thing. So, yeah. It's incredible. Right. Yeah. So much out there. And there's a lot of great stuff for sure. It really is. <clears throat> for, for some of the, uh, us out there, like for myself, I've, I've fallen into the trap before where like you're talking about seasons, there's seasons mm. where like a season turns into six months, it turns into 12 months, <laughs> it turns into like 14 years. Yeah. Um, how do you like, like, how do you recognize when you're stuck in that pattern, like to get out of that season and get back to, you know, doing the things that you need to do? Well, I think just being conscious of what your goals are and setting goals that are time bound is the biggest thing. So, you know, we've got a whole goal setting framework at Simplifying Entrepreneurship. And from that perspective, you know, they, they need to have a specific time bound uh, allotment. And when when that happens, you're able to complete. And I think that's the biggest thing there is, is you're allowing yourself completion. And when you allow yourself completion, you can allow you can allow yourself celebration. And if you never feel as though you're complete, you're going to work until you're dead. And I'm not saying I, I mean, I have no intention on retiring. I love, I love what I do and I love working, but at the same time, I, I don't want it to be all consuming. And I think that's where entrepreneurs sort of get bogged down in the frustration. Uh, and, you know, they lose some of the freedoms that they, they want because they're, they don't allow themselves um, to end anything and to celebrate it and, and then start something new. That's interesting. Corey, I want to know how you feel about celebrations. I don't like them. Period. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I what what I was thinking as you were as you were talking about that Pete was the um how I wonder how many people that typical or standard sort of approach to goal setting 
isn't really like the best approach for them or doesn't really work for them, right? So I don't, me personally, I don't do time-bound goals um, really. I will do, you know, like we'll set like a monthly revenue goal or something and it's always like I make them really ambitious because I want to outkick my coverage as frequently as I can. But I also don't beat myself up when I don't hit them. But like I don't really set, I don't put a time, an a time frame on most of the goals that I have because I know that, you know, life is so dynamic and you, there's so many things that happen and, and, you know, pivots and change are a very real thing. So I don't feel, I don't, I don't feel less inclined to like really go after my goals. Like I will hustle to hit them, but I also don't feel like I'm not, I don't know. I, I think I'm becoming more and more like Corey in that I don't really care about the celebration as much as I care like, oh, I've hit that. What's next? And just keep I'm, I'm a climber, if you will. And 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 I'm very, very goal oriented. And so to me, like, will I take will I pause to like acknowledge like, hey, we did something big? Yes. But it's becoming less and less because I feel like there's just more and more to do all the time. There's something more awesome you could be doing. Yes. 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 And I don't know if that what that says about us, but <laughs> I feel like it says something amazing. Well, I'm going to go out <laughs> like and say something crazy right now. What are you going to say? I'm going to mention Adam Carolla. Oh. Wait, uh, who's Adam Carolla? Uh, the only podcast I listen to. Okay. I don't even listen to our own podcast. I, he doesn't. Uh, I know. <laughs> but um, it, it, he's got this concept of an achievement day. Like, everybody has a birthday. There's nothing special about it. But an achievement day is something awesome that you did. Open a business. You, um, you know, got cured of cancer. Like, like whatever it is. Like, like, you did something that is out of the ordinary. And I think that that's what we should all really strive for is, like, creating that next achievement day. Yeah, we opened a business. Yeah, we wrote a book. That's cool. Let's do something better. Let's, let's make it better. Let's, let's create a better achievement. Yeah, I like that. What say you, Pete? Yeah, I mean, I, you're still you're still celebrating in that case. If you call it an achievement day, it's just different nomenclature. And and from that perspective, uh, enjoying the celebration of starting your business, enjoying the celebration of landing your biggest contract, um, and any of those different things, I think gives you when when you when you have that, it gives you confidence to move on. And that's what you were talking about a little bit, Corey. Is what's the next best thing? But if we go back and we we look back and we say, look at where we started and look at where we are now, we're building this confidence and we have the clarity that we can move ahead and do things better in the future. So I have this saying that clarity creates confidence and confidence ignites momentum. And I think that's one of the things. But part of really gaining that that confidence is the ability to sit back and say how far have we come and how far can we go and that in itself is a is a celebration even just the thought of it i'm not saying you need to you know put on the party hat and blow the blow the horn i i mean you could do that if that's part of your celebration structure but uh but from that perspective even just looking back and saying we we achieved i think is a big um a big step in the movement and the motivation to move ahead how many um, like entrepreneurs do you think recognize the importance of the um, the celebration versus they're more of the mindset that you know Corey and I kind of fall into of ninety percent. I'd say ninety percent fall into your mindset. Hmm. Uh, that that yeah. tracks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't no, know many entrepreneurs. I know a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. I don't know many who celebrate. And, and I mean, what all I'm saying is try and celebrate some wins and, and it gives you even more. You think you think, OK, well, we did that. Let's move on. But if you actually take pause and celebrate. So, you you know, however that is, even if it's just going out for lunch or if it's just even talking for five minutes about what an accomplishment this was. How does that make you feel after you have done that and look back at your accomplishments and what kind of motivation and energy does that give you to move ahead on the next project? Well, when it was supposed to be a 40 minute lunch and it turned into a 90 minute lunch and I'm like, damn it, <laughs> this, this lunch got away from me. Stop my glass. I'm going to lunch. <laughs> me and you? Yeah. 
Oh. <laughs> but yes, yeah, I, I understand. And, and that's like a hard thing for myself. Like I need, like I know that people need that celebration. They need that recognition. That's not in, in my, like, it's not in my repertoire. Like I don't, I don't need recognition or whatever. And I understand that some people need it. It's He's just, looking right at me, people. You're you're not going to get it as often as you'd like it. <laughs> but just think, I mean, for people out there who are listening that have teams, you know, you, everybody has different uh, people on the team, right? And and it's perfectly good, and that's what makes our team strong. And some people need the recognition, some people don't. But if you're one that doesn't, don't forfeit the fact that somebody else does, because they need that in order to gain their confidence and do what they want to do in order to move forward. And that's going to help you in your business. So think of it on a team perspective in that you can do what if you don't want to celebrate the thing, well, maybe you still need to put on a little bit of a celebration for one of your team members or a few of your team members that really do, because they're the ones that appreciate that. And they'll work even harder for you along the way as you as you push to your next goal. Or you can just hire somebody to do that for you. (laughs) <laughs> outsource However, the recognition <laughs> yeah does that is that does that solve the problem if are you, you asking me i am asking you does is it there solve a difference problem? if you're on a team and you're let's say that yeah. let's say that you know we I have a team of 15 people yeah. and you know 10 of the people on the team really need like that recognition yeah. and the praise right. and like hey yeah. great job yeah. and yeah. five of them are like me and they're like what's next keep going keep yeah. going does it matter if the recognition is coming from me or if I am outsourcing that celebration and recognition to someone else? I think, um, I think it matters to a certain uh, number of people that their leader is involved in the celebration. I I do believe that, Um, you know, this is something that I hadn't really given thought of uh, uh, before we got on this call here today. But as we're kind of going into this um, topic, I mean, I do think that there's a certain amount because it, it isn't genuine then. Right. And well, I think I think those people, those same people that want to celebrate, want to feel the genuine sort of nature of stuff. Um, so it, it, it's hard to say. I mean, so long as somebody on your team um, is really into that sort of thing and, and they know it's going to happen and they're they're like all in and, and you've you've uh, sort of openly appointed them to that, then I don't see a problem with that. What's what's wrong with that? I think that's good. Just as long as it happens for I those would- that want it. Perfect. I was going to say if if that was truly a scenario that I found myself in, and this might be good information for you, Corey, for when you you know open the restaurant, is I would just simply be very, very transparent and authentic with the team and say, look, I know that there are people on the team that need this. I'm not great at it. So mm. I am going to make sure it's handled, but I cannot, I will not be the one handling it myself. And it's not because I don't see it and don't care. It's because it's just not something I'm great at. And I'm genuinely going to spend my genuinely hard-earned money to try and not be that genuine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, we... but, I, but I think that's a, I think that's a good way to do it, Corey. You know, as leaders, we have to communicate, right? And that's our main job as leaders. So from that perspective, if you communicate with that and you tell them how it is and what's going to transpire, then they know what to expect. So I think that's great. Yeah. And I, I mean, I tell everybody that uh, I work with that no news is good news. So if I didn't yeah. yell at you today, you did a good job. It's yeah. terrible. Cool. Take as that his, home with you. <laughs> as his business partner, I can tell you right now, Pete, it's terrible. It's terrible because he needs no acknowledgement of anything. And I like to hear you did a really good job with that. Thank I, you. I appreciate you, Julie. That's, That's right. like He's, four times in the past two days. <laughs> and you have it on recording so you can listen to it every day. <laughs> He's going to cut it out. Who are you kidding? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we drop, though, or before we end the podcast, uh, is there anything we can do for you, Pete? Well, um, you can actually spread the word. Uh, we've got a great business assessment for those um, who are interested in learning more about their business, what they're doing really well and what they uh, need some help with. And that's on my website. And I know you're putting all that good stuff in the show notes, but more.coach is my website. So you can slide on over there. That's the best thing you can do to help me out in my pursuit of what I'm working with and who I'm working with, simplifying entrepreneurship for everybody. Awesome. And thank you. And thank you to all of our listeners. And like Pete said, all of that's going to be in the show notes. Yeah. And if you are interested in working with us, go ahead and reach out to us on our website. And for those of you who aren't quite yet in that space where you're able to hire some help, we have a ton of free content, including this podcast, which you listen to all the time and blogs and information free downloads on our website. So go grab them. And honestly, none of it requires an email address. So you are free to get the information with 
without even having to tell us who you are. You can also find us on LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and we have a YouTube channel. Don't forget to download and rate our podcast. Subscribe and give us a review and reach out to us about any topics that you might want us to cover. Or if you want to be on the guest of the show, head on over to sbpace.com. There's another resource we have for you. It's a book. It's called Seriously, Now What? A Small Business Guide to Disaster Preparedness. It is a number one Amazon bestseller. It has a digital download workbook. You can get it in paperback or Kindle. And if you've already read the book, Go back to Amazon and rate and review it. All right, that's it for today's show. I'm Corey. I'm Julie. And this was Bisquick, helping small businesses across America.